So in my most recent vlog, I expressed how I don't feel like I'm enjoying reading that much at the moment. Not that I don't feel like I'm enjoying it, I feel in a little bit of a rut with it. And like always when I express a sentiment like this, a lot of you guys suggested that I need to try mood reading. And usually when I get those comments, a noise isn't the right word, but I just kind of ignore it. <laughs> because for me, I've expressed before, you know, making fun vlog projects is as much um, a hobby for me as reading is. You know, I have so many creative ideas that I want to fulfill. And so that's as much of a hobby for me as reading is. They've always kind of really been hand in hand. I didn't read for long when I started reading again outside of having booktube, you know? So that really is a hobby for me. However, <laughs> I do feel like I need it. Guys, I'm actually gonna listen to you this time. And we're gonna try mood reading for a week. It's Friday today, so I guess we'll go to Thursday next week. And we're gonna try mood reading for a week. I'm gonna not set any kind of like goals on how much I have to read this week or what I need to read. We're just gonna try and, and mood read. And you guys are gonna find out very quickly. I'm not very good at it. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I can't see, I've gone shaky. I'm not very good at mood reading. <laughs> I'm not good at mood reading guys because I have no, I'm used to just knowing what I'm going to pick up next. I don't like the decision making. However, we're going to try and read some books that get me out of my rut a little bit and get me enjoying reading. So shall we go pick what I'm reading first? This lovely Friday. I'm actually probably not going to get a lot of reading done today because I have quite a lot of editing done. However, let's try our best, shall we? Let's, let's, let's pick some books. <laughs> okay, friends, there's a loud plane going past. Let's ignore that. Calm down. <laughs> We're here in my little TBR corner. Also, my hair looks crazy at the start of the video. It's not very good. I've just taken out of a bun. Anyways, let's focus, shall we? <laughs> We're here in my TBR corner. So this is my TBR cart. This is double stacked TBR books. And so is this, but those are probably books I'm less interested in if they're all the way back there. So I think what we should do is narrow down some options because I'm also going around Tom's this weekend. So I need to take some options with me around there for in case I finish the first book this weekend. So let's like make a grouping of books that I'm kind of interested in and then we'll pick one from that to start off with. I think I'm in the mood for spooky stuff. I'm starting to get in the mood for like mystery thriller horror, dark academia, witchy stuff, spooky stuff. Look at, look at, it's freaking bats. I love Halloween. I have got a video coming out in October that I'll be able to read like more spooky stuff in, more kind of like autumnal mood reads in. Um, but I will have some control over what I'm reading in that video, so it's okay. <laughs> but we're doing it as well in this video. So, some books that I have been, oh also wait, I didn't show you also, as well as all that, we have got two stacks of all the books you guys got me in the books you bought me because my cat died video. <laughs> Which are one of these. No. So I have got all of those as options as well. So, oh, we've got some graphic novels. Maybe I'll read some graphic novels this week. That might be fun. Okay, let me put these books back. I have been wanting to read for ages Queen Bee by Juno Dawson. I've seen some of my um, subscribers reading this and it looks really interesting. It's short, it's a novella, so I think it will be a good quick read. This is like a spin-off of the Her Majesty's Royal Coven books where it's Anne Boleyn. <laughs> who I was obsessed with as a child. We'll just run through these quickly. Let me, let me try and contain myself. But yeah, it's a spin-off. I've only read the first of the series. This is published obviously after the second, The Shadow Cabinet, which I'm not in the mood for. That's too long right now. <laughs> but I've been told you can read this having just read the first. So I'm interested in this. Also in Witches, I would be interested in reading In Defense of Witches, Why Women Are Still on Trial by Mona Shalot, which is non-fiction about kind of like the legacy of witches. I do really want to read at some point this year, I would like to soon. And this could be a good one for this week because of the audiobook. The next in the Lady Hardcastle series, this is like number 10? I have no idea. Nine, eight, 10, 11, something around that. This one, there's a murder on a stage. On a stage, oh my God, look at Lady, that's like the clearest, like, clearest I've ever seen their faces. That's interesting. But I feel like I wanna read another Lady Hardcastle. Oh my God, guys, there's so much I want to read. <laughs> Of the stuff that I got in that video, there's quite a few. Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan is like vampires and women in the 1990s, similar to South Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I'd love to make progress in the Truly Devious series now that I own the box in the woods. And this is like a summer camp murder case. So that might be good to read now versus in October when it's like, this is like kind of spooky summer when I are on the dregs of summer. The I'm just picking loads from this from this stack. Let me pick two more from this stack and then, well, there's the graphic novels down here, but let me not pick them out. <laughs> the next in the Three Dahlias series, mystery series. There's a lot of mysteries I'm picking out. And then also one that I got um, from 
the publisher, the final act of Juliet Willoughby, which sounds really interesting, kind of Evelyn Hugo, but murder. So those are kind of, I feel like our initial options. Let me show you them. That's quite a lot. Can I calm down? <laughs> I mean, there's like so many. This, I'm not a good mood reader, guys. How do I decide? Which of these do I fancy the most right now? I feel like I'm leaning, and again, I'll probably take this stack with me around Tom's. I feel like I'm leaning towards Queen Bee by Juno Dawson. You lot have made a damn well good decision. I hope you're pleased with yourselves. I think this could just be a good pick to start us off. Like, I'm not expecting necessarily a five star from this, but I love a bit of Anne Boleyn, you know? <laughs> I love Anne Boleyn. And I just think this would be a quick read, you know? I don't think there's, this is gonna put me in a slump. So yeah, I think I'm gonna pick this. I think I'm gonna pick this. Quick read, short read. I mean, after that, I feel like what I'm leaning towards is Lady Hardcastle, but I don't know how interesting that is to you guys. It's like the dead of the series. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with Queen Bee by Gina Dawson. Super excited. I'm actually feeling very excited for this. I'll check in with you once I'm a little bit of the way through this. I probably won't see you tonight. I don't think I'll get very far in tonight. Like I said, I've got a lot of editing to do. If I don't end up reading anything today, we'll do this from Saturday to Friday next week. But if I do start today, then we'll stop Thursday next week. So yeah, I feel like I, when I mood read, I just pick short books though, let's be honest. <laughs> okay, so it's Saturday. I read nothing yesterday. <laughs> Like I kind of predicted I would. So the vlog is gonna run from Saturday to Friday, but before we start reading, I actually wanna to chat to you guys about something that I've been trying and loving. So let's go chat about it. So something I've really been struggling with lately is being productive, being time efficient. I feel like when I'm trying to work, at the moment, I am wasting so much time procrastinating, getting distracted by social media is probably the biggest one. I just, it's so bad, I just start scrolling on things. I get distracted so easily at the moment. I have been finding that I'm being very stressed and anxious, and thus I can't, you know, you can't work to your best when you're feeling stressed and anxious. And then, like a, like fate, <laughs> Magic Mind reached out to me and offered for me to try some of their shots and see what I thought of them before then sponsoring this video. And guys, I have to tell I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Dida actually wants to tell you. She's just come up behind me. She wants to tell you that I love it. <laughs> Don't you deeds. No. Um, okay, let's talk about it. So Magic Mind is a mental performance shot that you drink in the morning. You can drink it with your coffee. You can drink it mixed into another drink or you can just drink it as a shot like I do. It gets you focused, mentally clear, motivated and productive whilst also reducing stress. And it is 100% safe. All the ingredients are third party tested and all the ingredients are also sourced from the best places. So I've personally been using it for over a week now and I have noticed a massive, massive, massive reduction in stress. That's the biggest thing I've noticed for me personally. I have felt so much calmer. I felt like I've reacted to stressful situations a lot better. I felt like a lifted mood. I felt a bit happier and yeah just calmer just less stressed in general just able to like face the day a lot more easily and also i've felt more motivated i've done stuff for the past couple of days i haven't done for like months and months and months maybe a year i started calendar blocking again i started <laughs> focusing on some bigger projects that i really want to achieve it's made me feel yeah, a lot more motivated and like those work projects are within reach. So you guys can go to magicmind.com forward slash megwithbooks and use the code megwithbooks20 to get up to 48% off your first time subscription for the next 10 days or 20% off a one time purchase. I really recommend you guys try it out if you've been struggling with productivity and motivation because like I said, I've been using it for about seven days so far and I'm gonna continue to use it because it really has been helping me. Okay, let's go start reading. <laughs> Right, hello friends, it's been a while. I didn't film much at the weekend. You wanna see the bit of B-roll? I went and read on the beach, which was lovely. We had pizza for dinner one night, went for some nice walks, but it's Tuesday morning. <laughs> it's Tuesday morning. I have played some Sims the past couple of days. I got a little sale on and I got 50% off the Get Famous pack. I have a lot of thoughts. Let me tell you them briefly. The game mechanics, wonderful. Like the going to work on an acting set and like being an actor, obsessed. The, t the world? awful, diabolical. The like group lots and the homes, just like so disappointing compared to now what they do with worlds, like the cottage living. Cottage living is my favorite pack ever to exist. <laughs> I love cottage living. But yeah, I think it's very interesting. This whole get famous 
pack because I'm enjoying some of the gameplay, but it feels very empty at the same time. Anyways, I have finished Queen Bee. I decided to read the whole thing before coming and speaking to you because it is like, it's only 160 pages and the font is like absolutely mahusive. So it's like a pretty short novella. I'm giving this five stars. <laughs> This is not like an all time five star. You know, it's not the five star that like I'm craving, craving desperate for like, it's the kind of book where like 50% of the way through, I was like, oh, it's a solid, solid four star. Then 80% of the way through, it was a 4.5. And then the last few pages made it into a five. You know what I mean? But I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So this is the story of Anne Boleyn's coven. And you remind me of a witch. And it's told in the present day, just after she's been killed, because spoiler alert, you know, Amberlynn gets beheaded. She's the first beheaded. <laughs> okay, get me surprised if you don't know that. This is something I'm intrigued about. Like those of you in the, in the US or, or anywhere in the world, how much do you know? Like when I say Amberlynn, do you know she was the wife of Henry VIII and was beheaded? Is that like common knowledge? Cause it's common knowledge to us, but like worldwide is it common knowledge? Like you guys in America sometimes say stuff about your presidents. I'm like, who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? Well, I know about Theodore Roosevelt having teddy bears named after him. And I think that's so iconic. Like that's a better legacy than anything you could do as president ever could be. Having, being named, like, teddy bears being named after you. Imagine that. <laughs> the plot of this is basically, we're following Grace Fairfax, who was a member of the coven, trying to avenge Anne's death because someone within the coven betrayed her. And it's told, it is split timeline a little bit, but it's one of those ones that I like where it's like, predominantly the present and the few flashbacks to the past. And I just want to say one thing. This healed something in me from when I was a child. I just love Anne Boleyn. Try not to say mother challenge. Failed. I just love Anne Boleyn. Like if you were a it girl when you were younger, you loved Anne Boleyn. You just had an obsession with Anne Boleyn. Can't tell you why. <laughs> loved Anne Boleyn. Like I remember going to the Tower of London and like I was so obsessed. There's like a, or at least when I went, there was like an exhibition of like some of her dresses and, and jewelry in there. And there was like a little bit of Anne Boleyn or like going to Hever Castle, which isn't that far from me as a kid. And like, that's like her family home. Anyways, I just love it. <laughs> I just love Anne Boleyn. And so reading this was so fun. Oh, she's obviously only in the flashbacks because she's like <laughs> in present day. But I just found it so interesting. And so but this is basically a prequel. It's a, it's a companion novella to the Her Majesty's Royal Coven series, which is a series where like witches are in government. It's like a branch of government in the UK. And it's the story of like childhood friends in that. But this, I could read a whole series based on like Tudor witches, like the little coven of witches. And I think it's so interesting. Like obviously the historical setting for witches is so interesting because that's the time they're being hunted down. Like there's literal witch hunters in the street. I just loved it. it I loved how it built. There's moments at the ending that almost made me cry. I love how it tied in. There was just like, a, there was a letter at the end that got me and there was like the last chapter, like the epilogue got me. They got me, they got me. There's like a romance in this as well that is very, is done with such, is deftness the right word? I don't even know what that means, but just like, just a lovely like touch. It's not overdone. Or well, there's like kind of multiple romances or feelings that people have that is just done so well. Guys, I had so much fun reading this. It's super short. I would really recommend it. I do think I've obviously only read Her Majesty's Royal Coven. This came out after The Shadow Cabinet, which is the sequel, um, which I haven't read. I would say I would recommend reading Her Majesty's Royal Coven before this because it makes some of the ending why it became a five star for me. And I just think it's in, I think it's good to get used to the world and get used to kind of yeah, the rules of everything through the first book, but I don't, I mean, I haven't read The Shadow Cabinet, so you don't need to read The Shadow Cabinet before you read this. I loved it. Anne Boleyn, what an icon. I just, like, I had so much fun. The setting was wonderful. The peeks into the way that Gina Dawson really researched history and real people that are in this book. Oh, I loved it, guys. And I just love witches. I love witches, I love witches. Anyways, today, obviously whilst I've been finishing that, I've been thinking like, oh, what should I read? What should I read? And I thought about like taking you down there and like having a little look through my books again. But if I'm honest with myself, I know what I wanna read. I know what I wanna read. I want an audiobook, and that audiobook is An Act of Foul Play by T.E. Kinsey, the next in the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. Let me actually tell you what number this is. Okay, this is number nine. This is number nine in the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries series. Part of me didn't wanna pick it because in my brain, I'm like, well, this isn't interesting for you guys because it's like number nine in a series and they're all the same. I mean, it doesn't mean I can tell you about the plot because there won't be any spoilers for like the rest of the books. But um, 
I don't know how interesting it is for you guys, but the whole point of this video is I let I go I let go of that and I just read what I want to read and I want to read Lady Hardcastle. I fucking love Lady Hardcastle and Flow. I cannot tell you how excited I am to start this audiobook today. I'm gonna aim to get halfway today and maybe check in with you. We're just going to go out. I don't know if I'll film it because it's not very interesting. We're going out shopping, like clothes shopping. I need some socks. <laughs> We're going to like a like a what's the word? outlet we're going to an outlet near us so yes but i i'm just so excited for this one i'll let you know about the plot when i'm halfway through but it just gives me good vibes it just give me good vibes <laughs> i love lady hard girls i'm so excited <laughs> hello cuties it is wednesday evening and where's my book <laughs> it's over here i am halfway through an act of foul play by t.e kinsey so i mean if you haven't heard me talk about this series before <laughs> <laughs> Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo are solving mysteries. I feel like you're a little bit tight in. Should we move back a bit? Yeah, they solve mysteries, often murder mysteries together, and this is the ninth in a series, and it's my favourite cosy mystery series ever. The vague synopsis is this one. Oh, guys, ah, I love it, I love it, I love it. They are investigating Lady, Lady Hardcastle and Flo are at a play with some of their friends one night, and the the curtain comes up on act two and there's a dead body on stage. One of the actors has been murdered and there's been a few, well, there's, not, there's been one more murder <laughs> since then. And it's all of them investigating the murders going on within this theater company and within this stage production and interviewing the actors and the, uh, the writer and the director and the stage hands. And it's so fun. As someone who loves theater, I'm having so much fun with this setting. Oh, I just love it. I just love, I just love this series so much. There's something about this series, guys. I don't even know if I I can talk to you or if I'll have many interesting things to say to you about this because there's something about this that I just find so comforting and warm and cozy that like it's one of the only books these days that I kind of just switch my brain off it's like Real Housewives for my brain <laughs> <laughs> like at lunch times, I can only watch mindless television at lunch in between work because I just want to give my brain a rest. Hang on, I'm gonna lower you a bit. And so I watch Real Housewives. This is like the equivalent, not that this is bad. I mean, I think it's really good writing, really good mysteries, but I just find it so easy now. I'm so, it just feels like coming home that I can kind of just turn my brain off. I absolutely adore this series, guys. I love it. I love it. I love Lady Hardcastle and Flo's relationship. Flo's twin sister is in this one, which is really, really fun. And yeah, there's something about the writing, the world view that like Lady Hardcastle and Flo have in the way that they, they talk to each other and their sensibility and their humour that just like sets me at ease. It's like, just being in the presence of a lovely person, you know? I love Venn diagrams. <laughs> I really do. I love Venn diagrams. It's just something about those three circles and the analysis about where there is the intersection, right? I don't I don't know, I guys, I love it. But I don't have like <laughs> I turned my brain off. I'm loving the setting of this one. You know, I love theatrics. I love drama. I'm hoping that even more of that is going to be made in the second half. But I just can't, I just can't tell you how much I adore it. <laughs> I just love it so much. I just love it so much. I'm glad that I'm reading it. I think it's, these I always say are really great palette cleansers. Like if I just need like a bit of a refresh, these are always kind of what I turn to. And I've only got two more until I'm up to date in the series. I mean, he publishes like one or two every year. So like I can, yeah, <laughs> there'll be more. But I am almost caught up. And like I said, I've read basically this entire first half with just the audiobook. The audiobook is where it's at. If you're gonna read these, listen to the audiobooks. Don't, don't bother getting the books. You don't need them. Listen to the audiobook because it's just one narrator but she is incredible and I always say she does the voices of all the different characters so well and there was like points in this book where she's doing characters impersonating other characters and hearing how she does that <laughs> and how you can hear it's not quite the right accent but really resembles the accent that they get character is incredible so yeah I'm gonna have a cozy evening I always feel bad when I reach a point in the vlog when there's been no b-roll I don't give a shit about B-roll. Do you guys give a shit if vlogs have B I don't think I'm a B-roll kind of girl. You know, I'm not an aesthetic. Not that I'm unaesthetic, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for fun. Not that aesthetic isn't fun. Oh. <laughs> stop while you're, stop while you're ahead. Okay. But I feel like they break vlogs up nicely, B-roll clips, but sometimes I just have it in me. I don't want to be perceived. I find filming simple B-roll clips harder than just sitting down and talking to the camera. I can yap. 
I can yap for days. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna go have dinner and then I'll probably read a lot more this evening. Maybe even try and finish this this evening because it is really quick. And Tom and I are probably gonna play some Pokemon together. I'm having a lot of fun playing Pokemon at the moment. Maybe watch something. We've started watching Buffy again after having stopped for ages because we just run out of stuff to watch. And we're on season four and it, it starts season four as a struggle. Like seasons one, two, three and Buffy are amazing. And then four is a bit of a struggle season, isn't it? Um, that I keep saying, we keep saying, we're watching these episodes that are thematically, no one cares about my Buffy opinions, but the way that it's plotted and paced is incredible. The way the arc that these these episodes go on sometimes in an episode is amazing. The tent, how tense you feel, amazing. But the writing is a bit shit. The like dialogue is sometimes really cringy. <laughs> Like, how can it be both things at once? So anyways, that's my evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning, definitely having finished this, either tonight or in tomorrow. And yeah, it just gives me, it gives me such joy, this series. Was it all just a dream, just all in my head? Hello cuties, how's everyone doing? I don't know why I went like that. <laughs> okay. I finished an act of foul play. I'm gonna give this one a 4.5. I'm giving this one a 4.5. I still really, I loved it. I loved it. I'm this close to giving it a five. Do I want to give it a five? No, it's a 4.5. And I can't really tell you why it's just not a five. I think really, I know I can tell you why. I but I did tell a bit of a lie there. I just wasn't very comfortable during the last 100 pages, which I just read. And I could have got comfortable, but I chose not to. I chose to just power through. And that meant that my real experience was tainted a little bit. And thus it's a 4.5. I like the fact they're actors because people confusably lie. I really enjoyed some of the twists in this. I thought they were handled well. And at the end of the day, I just love Lady Hardcastle Made Flow. These aren't like the craziest mysteries in the world in terms of reveals. It's always a fairly safe time. I just let my brain be shut off. And when the murder's revealed, I'm like, oh, okay. But I liked the kind of contained group, the contained setting that we had in this one. And I'm just so excited to read two more. I can't believe there's only two more. Well, there'll be more, there'll be more. I hope he writes the 15,000 <laughs> Lady Hardcastle mysteries. I hope we never end. I also love that he does author's notes at the end with all the kind of like historical relevance with like what he's made up and what is actually true. So in this one, like the theatre doesn't actually exist where it's set, but things like um, there are certain stories that characters write that he's gotten from the Bristol Times when this is set, which I just think is marvellous. So yeah, it's getting a 4.5. I'm so glad I read it. We now have to pick our final book because it's Thursday night. I am gonna do some reading tonight. I've also got reading sprints tomorrow with my patrons. So I reckon I will get quite a lot of reading done. Let me show you the books I should choose from, okay? I'm gonna show you the stack of books that I've been on TBR Cluedo this year that I have not yet read that I do not have set plans to read. All of these, right? So I should really read one of these, but I don't really want to. <laughs> None of these are calling me. If I'm honest with you, the book that is calling me, and it's another book in a series, I think there's something when I'm mood reading at the moment or when I want to get out of a slump or just kind of like feel a bit safe in my reading, I'm going back to characters and authors I've read from before, you know? So I haven't read this series in years and years and years because I thought it was finished. I thought this was an original trilogy and then there was gonna be some spin-off series, but it doesn't seem like that. It seems like it's gonna be a six book series. So I'm gonna be reading The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. I was editing the start of this video the other day and hearing myself talk about how this is a good time to read it because it's like set during the summer and with the te well, it, summer has really ended. When I was saying that a week ago, it was sunny, I went to the beach the next day <laughs> and then today it's raining. But I feel like I've talked myself into it. This is a mystery where we follow Stevie Bell. The first few books are set at Ellingham Academy, which is the school for gifted students that she goes to, but this one is set at a summer camp. So I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit the way through it. But yeah, I just kind of want well, it's good for series progress. I don't know how interesting it is for you guys, but um, I just want to go back to series and authors that feel safe. I mean, I uh, I feel like I've probably forgotten so much from this the first three books in this series because I haven't read it for a long time and I thought the series was finished. You know, I know that her boyfriend really annoys me. So anyways, I'll check with you on a bit way through, but I'm excited. I'm excited to pick this series back up again. So it is Saturday, <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep doing this vlog until I finish this book, which I think will be today. I am just under halfway through The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. I am loving it. 
I don't want to see any comments, by the way, that are telling me, oh my god, this vlog has done so well for you, Megan, that you should definitely just mood read forever. I don't want to hear that. I want to see a single comment. If you've commented, go delete it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Okay, first of all, I hear you, but I'm not listening, so we're done. Okay. Because... There's so many vlogs I want to make that make me happy. That like, I get excited. Like my next vlog, I've been teasing it for a while. I am so excited to make. I think it's gonna be such a fun, fun vlog to make. I am gonna hate the books I'm about to read and that's okay. That's okay. I'm really excited to make this vlog. So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that. However, I am loving this book. So this one is set after the original three books, which you could read this without having read them. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is written in a way that you could read them. You could read this without having read them. Like you'd miss out on character development and knowing who these characters are, but it does kind of set it up in a way that you could. So like it references what's happened. This is minor spoilers. I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's a spoiler, but if it is a spoiler, <laughs> I've, I've warned you. Like it says in those first three books, she solved the mystery that she went to Ellingham, Ellingham Academy to solve basically. But it doesn't tell you how, it doesn't tell you what she found out. It just is like, oh, she solved it, you know? And so, and it does reintroduce everyone. So you could read this without having read them. And in this one, she's invited to a summer camp to solve a cold case of a murder that happened there in the 1970s. And I'd say for the first maybe 80 pages, it is split timeline between the present day and the seventies going through what happened when that murder happened. But now it's kind of, mostly the present day. So I don't mind that. And I really liked the flashbacks. I am just having so much fun. I actually went back and looked at what rating I'd given the previous three books. So I gave Truly Devious four stars, The Vanishing Stair four stars, and The Hand on the Wall three. I don't remember why. <laughs> I didn't like that one as much. But like, this is like closing in on five star territory. And again, not five star you know, favorite of all time, five star favorite of the year, but I'm having so much fun. The summer camp setting is so fun. Like it's, it's a very interesting setting to read as a British person because like I was talking about this with my patrons when we had um, a parent trap movie night and like summer camp is not a thing here. Like you'll go, you'll do like week long, like I used to do a week long drama and dance event where you'd go there from like nine to five every day for a week in the summer and then you'd put on a show at the end. It was like my favorite. I loved that so much. Like you'll do maybe like a week long tennis thing or, but you, we don't have camp. And like the Americans were saying it's cause you have like 10 years off in the summer. <laughs> we have six weeks. Our summer holiday is six weeks. Yours is like a third of the year. It's absolutely insane. So the parents need to get rid of the kids to summer camp. So it's a very kind of interesting setting for us as like a, as an international UK reader, because it's kind of like able to be romanticized <laughs> as like a, as a very evocative setting without actually having to have lived it. But I'm really loving it. I've loved the throwback to the 70s. I thought the way the characters were introduced, the way that the murder kind of played out was really, really fascinating. And I forgot that these books are kind of a little bit funny. There's a little bit of humor to them. Maureen Johnson is really funny. I love from Maureen Johnson, there's this little, almost like graphic novel called Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village that is really funny, that makes fun of the kind of classic murder mystery in a quaint English village and the kind of tropes and the characters Actors that you have. And I just, I guess I forgot, there's like really moments of a, a great humor in this that I'm really enjoying. And I think I'm also really enjoying it because David, Stevie's boyfriend is not in it. I don't like this man. And I don't remember why I don't like this man, but I don't like this man. <laughs> don't like him one bit. There's something about him sets me off. He's vile, vile. I wouldn't wipe my ass with him if I had diarrhea. <laughs> in fact, I think he's about to appear, which is sad, but I don't, I'm hoping he won't be in it too much. Like I'm hoping, oh, I see his name. <laughs> I think he's about to turn up. But I've gone half the book without having to encounter David. I just remember I don't like this man. Don't like this man. But yeah, the writing's really fun. The mystery's really fun. There's really, I think Moore Johnson does come up with really interesting mysteries. Like they're like um, clues in a mystery, you know, like really interesting little events that sprinkle in throughout the mystery. I'm loving it. I'm having so much fun. The audiobook is great. I am probably gonna finish this today. I'm having so much fun. And the, the box in the woods, the murder, is horrible. Like the, it, it's got this great drama and true crimeness, but it's YA and it's easy to read. Guys, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It probably won't be a five star. I don't know. I don't want to talk myself out of it, but it'll probably be like a 4.5, you know? But this vlog has been very successful. <laughs> but I don't want to hear it. Mood read, Megan. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. I'll do this once in a blue moon, okay? <laughs> Not all the time. So anyways, I'm going to go finish it, but I love the camp setting. I love the clues. I love the little elements of mixed media that we have throughout it. It's really interesting as well. The owner of the camp is this like 
tech guy or like he's the owner of something called box box where like it's a subscription service for boxes and he wants to start bag bag which is a subscription service for reusable bags and it's just like making fun of that kind of like culture and the kind of guy he is is very funny like making fun of these this kind of stereotypical dude bro tech hustle culture vegan meditation i mean i like a good meditation but you know what i mean that kind of person uh it's really funny so there's just like a lot of elements to this i'm enjoying so i'm gonna go watch the football I've got football no retro on today half 12 and i'm gonna keep reading this today and hopefully i will get close to finishing it because i am yeah i'm really loving it oh hello hello um a bit of a strange note to end this vlog on the ending of this book is diabolical mm. Yeah, it's, it's not good. The ending of this book is not good. And so I'm really struggling with how to rate it because the last 30 pages of this, 40 pages of this are a two star, but I loved the rest of the book. So what I'm, I wasn't giving it a four, but maybe I'm leaning towards a 3.5 because that ending is so ridiculous. My problem with the ending essentially, it's not fair play. It's not a fair play murder mystery. I can't, I'm like, I'm human right now. I mean, I'm human. Like without spoiling anything the resolution involves characters you've never met right the the reveal revolves centers around a character that appears in those last 30 40 pages and that's just not fair and i would expect from someone like maureen johnson who seems to really revere the you know art of a murder mystery and the kind of tropes of murder mystery to then pull that out the bag. And also it's kind of crazy. Like the reveal, like the kind of topic that it's based on is also just insane. Not like problematic or anything, but just like out of left field, like beyond, like no hints that that is the route we're going down. It's a sharp turn right? <laughs> into what this book, I it's a really bad ending. It's a really bad ending. I think I'm gonna have to give it a 3.5. I also didn't love the second half as much as I loved the first half. I still really enjoyed it, but David appears. He actually redeemed himself a little bit in the second half. Like I didn't hate him as much <laughs> as I hated him before he appeared, but I just don't think this book needs a romantic subplot. I don't think it's even very like, at this point they hadn't seen each other in six months face to face, you know? I don't feel any chemistry between them. I don't feel any romance between them. I don't I don't want this romantic subplot. David can get gone. I love her friends and Nate, Nate is great in this. He's like this um, kid who wrote, or a kid, they're teenagers, who wrote like a really well-known book when he was younger that was indie published and then got mainstream published and it's like a cult success, but he's only written the first book and he has like writer's block the whole series. He can't write the rest of the series. Uh, he was great in this, but, but yeah, th that ending. I almost want you guys to read this so you can understand what I just experienced. <laughs> like it's so out of left field. The character we've never met and the topic are just like, we didn't get any hints to that. We didn't get any like suggestions of that. I'm just like, hold up what the hell is going on so a little bit of a strange end to the mood reading but um yeah i've enjoyed mood reading i can't mood read for longer than a week though like i'm already itching to get back to like plan tbrs and kind of bigger vlog projects but i think this has been really good taking this week for me to mood read because it has i have had some successful books particularly the first two and the first half of this one just that ending babes Whew crazy but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog remember to check out magic mind below and use the code megwithbooks20 to get up to 48 percent off your first subscription for the next 10 days or 20 percent off a one-time purchase let me know what you thought of any of the books i read in this vlog i particularly recommend queen bee that was iconic but i do think you have to read her Murchie's royal coven first and we made some good series progress in this vlog didn't finish any series but we read three books that are part of a series so that's pretty good anyways i love you guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.